So one important tool for working with issues of collective identity and human rights is museums. And um, <coughs> museums, uh, one interesting thing about them is that they have lots and lots of visitors. For Sweden, for example, a country with just 9 million inhabitants, we have about 18 million museum visits every year. So museums matter in society. And another interesting thing about museums is that they are very commonly collectively publicly owned. So they are our institutions and we should be able to demand from them high quality work as regards the promotion of diversity and human rights. First of all, later museum research tells us that museums produce collective culture. That is what they do. Through working with exhibitions, with learning, with collecting, they work through representing certain perspectives into building culture, norms, identity, us and them relations, and gender roles in our societies. And this means that questions about ethics uh, and responsibility goes right into museum exhibitions. Who is it that gets represented there and who doesn't? Whose story is told in exhibitions and whose story is unseen? In terms of religions, of classes, of identities, of disabilities and sexualities and so on. The emphasis on equal rights in the first article of the human rights should also mean equal rights to be seen and represented in society, also in museums. And this means that for me, working in a museum, I have to think very carefully about what does get represented in exhibitions. And for you, as a museum visitor, you should make demands on your museum. So you go there and you find that you are not satisfied with what is represented. You should tell your museum so. Museums want to be audience responsive, so help them being so by telling what you think. Grand museums are often very um, uh, collecting based, heavily collecting based, I would say. <clears throat> and uh, it's the same thing about collection, whose story is told there, what do these big collections really represent, whose history and story is visible there, and the information the museums have about their collections, what about that information? Does that truly represent all the histories out there? I don't think so. <clears throat> Museum collection information is uh, most commonly very scarce, very selective, and very, very narrowly geographically focused. I could take my own museum as an example. We have a major archaeological collection from Sweden, but the information we have about the object is or have been where in Sweden they have been found. But we have started to uh, map <coughs> our collections and all the global relations that are in those objects, and we find that very many objects in our collections have actually traveled the world. <coughs> they come from different parts of the world, although they have been found in Sweden. And this, of course, tells a rather different story of Swedishness and about the connection of Swedish history and Swedish people to the world in all times. So, and finally, find and visualize the unstraight. <coughs> Look for transformation, migration, hybridity, the many identities, the intercultural, and that which does not fit classification. Take a look at the uh, Unstraight Museum website. It's a, good start, uh, it's a good place to start. Thank you for me. Mm.